When you're trying to quit something, there is one mentality that defeats all the rest. Can you guess what it is? Let me tell you a story, right? There was a person I knew quite a while ago, a few years ago now, and he was, to generally describe him, he was pretty motivated in terms of the gym. And we'll talk about the gym in this setting, by the way, right? Motivated in the gym, pretty self-disciplined, and he also like scheduled in like, you know, cheap meals in, in the, the year, the month, so that he would keep the progress going and like, you know, he would allow himself that kind of level of, you know, cheating in his routine and regimen, right? There was another guy I knew, so let's say that was person A, this is person B, right? Almost exactly identical in terms of personality and like how motivated he was to go to the gym and all of that. And the difference was, right, he was very absolute in his kind of way about life. So for him, cheap meals didn't exist. Once he knew what was bad for him, he just eliminated it from his life, right? Entirely. When cold turkey was like, oh, I'm just not going to have that anymore. Absolutely, right? And with everything else, these two people were pretty much the same. Same level of motivation, same level of kind of self-discipline and kind of, that kind of thing. But over the years, as I saw these two people grow up like alongside each other in their like gym journey and their kind of journey overall, I saw a big difference in these people, right? Person A would inevitably fall into a hole with his kind of cheat meals. He would have a cheat meal and then it would go out of hand. He would like, oh, I'll, I'll allow myself another one, another one, another one. And his gym goals, generally speaking, he never really met the ideal like body physique or the general kind of goals in the gym that he wanted to go for, right? Whereas person B found it almost effortless to achieve the body that he wanted. Like almost immediately, he had to keep setting new goals because he was progressing that quickly, right? And he never fell down a hole with these cheap meals because he never had any in the first place, right? And the annoying thing was for person A was that he had to keep seeing this person B succeed so easily. Like he didn't even have any thought to it. It was so easy to him and it was just so aggravating to watch. Like imagine trying so hard and, and failing again and again while a person that is doing the same thing alongside you is finding it so simple. Imagine that for a second, right? So the lesson that I learned from this, and by the way, I have something to, to admit here, right? Person A was a friend of mine that I knew a long time ago. But person B is actually myself. I know that sounds arrogant that the oh, the, the good character in the story is, is actually me, but there's something about my personality that I just like extremes, right? And a lesson I learned from that by observing myself alongside this character who was like almost identical to me in every single way, but wasn't extreme, I learned this lesson. So listen carefully. Zero is easier than one, Right? Do you understand what that means? Zero beers a week is easier than one beer a week, right? Zero cupcakes in the month is easier than one cupcake in the month, right? Zero cheat meals in the year is easier than one cheat meal in the year, right? And it's, it seems extreme. It seems counterintuitive to go extreme to cold turkey and that would be easier. But here's the thing. With one, there's that mental anguish. When is it going to come? When is that bad habit that I crave so much? When is it gonna, when's that day gonna come? Right, and you spend so much willpower saying, oh, I'm just gonna hold on a little bit longer, then I'm gonna get it, right? Just a little bit more, a little bit more, and I can finally have it. And you're craving it, it's constantly in the back of your mind. But with zero, there is no mental anguish. With zero, there's no waiting for that day because it won't cut, it's eliminated from your life. With zero, you can be at peace with the fact that you just no longer do the activity anymore, right? It's almost a sense of identity as well. I'm not a smoker. I'm not a drinker anymore, right? Maybe you had a, a past history of that, but right now, I'm not a smoker. I'm not a drinker. I just don't do that. Full stop. And there's a sense of peace you can be at with that kind of mentality. It's very easy to run through life and just to walk through in that way, right? This guy, person A, it was like he was swimming through mud, how difficult he, he felt his life was. 
because he kept craving it and waiting for the day that it come and eventually you'd slip and fall, right? Because that's what happens when you rely on your willpower, when you're tired, when you're weak, when you're hungry, that willpower bar is low and it all comes collapsing down, right? It all ultimately fails because you rely on the fact that you have the willpower to restrict yourself. But if you eliminate it entirely, then it's gone. It's out of the equation. It's so part of your identity that it doesn't even make, it doesn't even come up as a thought, right? Oh, come on, Dylan, have a drink. Oh, have a cigarette. Like, no, I don't smoke, bro. I don't drink. It's as simple as that. It's done. It's a, it's a, it's a made decision in your brain. It's a system that has one answer, right? Whereas the system of like putting one beer in the week or putting one cigarette in the week, you have to think, okay, what day is a good day for me to smoke a cigarette? When should I, how fast should I spread it out? How many cigarettes should I like? Oh, I've not smoked in a month. Maybe I deserve two this week, right? All this thought and mental anguish, like thinking about it through, saying no is just a simple answer. You don't have to think. It's on autopilot. It's automatic. It just works. And look, I understand it's not an easy thing, right? Cold turkey, while I describe it as the process and the system is easy, doing it in the first place perhaps is the hard part, right? Switching from someone who's a raging alcoholic to going to to zero. That's a little bit hard, right? But once you're there, it's easy. But how do you get there? There's the basic thing, you know, there's like the the people, the places you hang around, the availability of that substance or whatever it is you're addicted to in your environment, right? So if I was addicted to alcohol, I'd probably stop going to pubs and bars and drinks with my mates. And if I was going to go on a date, I wouldn't say, do you want to go out for drinks? I would say, do you want to go out for a coffee or a walk or whatever it is, right? It's reduce that kind of the frequency at which it turns up in your life, Right? The people you hang around, so if you have alcoholic friends, don't hang out around them, right? They will be NPCs, they will be crab bucket mentality people that will drag you back down, okay? We don't want crab bucket mentalities in our life. Crab bucket friends, let's call them, right? Crab bucket friends, I like that phrase. Just reduce your exposure to these people and these places in your life and the availability you have to these things in your own environment, right? So don't have beers in your fridge, don't have whiskeys and liquors in your in your drinks cabinet. Eliminate that and it becomes a lot easier to get to the place where you can now say zero is easier than one. But having said that, why would you even allow one in the first place? If you genuinely believe that one, this stuff is bad for you, then why even allow one, right? It's a, it's a kind of a cognitive, cognitive dissonance that you allow yourself to have that cheat meal. You allow yourself to have that one beer. You know it's bad, but, oh, but I could have one. What kind of like a half belief is that? What kind of a a weak mentality are you bringing to the table there? Right? It doesn't quite make sense. It makes you seem a little bit pathetic that you need to have this bad thing, even though you know it's bad for you. You know it's bad, but you're like, oh, but one, it's okay. Right? All in moderation. That is such a weak mentality. Every time I hear that phrase, it's just like, what? What? You, so you know, you admit it's bad. Like any single amount of it is bad. But, oh, it's okay in moderation. How are you going to justify that in your brain? Right? It's a cope. It's pathetic. It's weak. Right? I know that seems very harsh to say, but that's what I believe. And who are you going to be, by the way? Right? Are you going to be the person that describes himself as the recovering alcoholic, the recovering smoker, the, the recovering drug habit abuser right or are you going to describe yourself as someone who has let that go and put it in the past who do you think is going to succeed more in life right oh i'm i'm a recovering alcoholic actually oh alcohol a beer no i, I don't i don't do that anymore that's i don't drink who's succeeding more you answer the question i think it's pretty clear right and that's how zero is easier than one Right? So once you get to that place where you can get rid of those kind of things in your life, the people, the places, the availability of stuff in your life, 
it all becomes a very simple equation, a simple system where you can just forget about the whole thing. And talking about people, I am going to release a community for the movement of men in this channel. And that is going to be available to you in a very, very small amount of time. So click on the first link in the description to be added to my mail list to be the first to know about this group. Okay. With that being said, knowledge is power and the power is yours. I'll see you in a bit.